Immutable Linux, what is it, what purpose does it serve, and why is Ubuntu building its own version of it? We'll be talking about these things today, and to start out we need to talk about the word immutable, which really means unchanging over time, or unable to be changed completely. All in all, an immutable operating system is an OS that is designed to be read-only. Basically, it can't be changed once it has been officially deployed. That means things like core system files, configurations, and other objects of the operating system cannot be touched by anything outside the operating system. And now you might be asking yourself, in what place would we want to use an immutable operating system? Well, they're actually commonly used and there's already a few that exist in Linux itself. And the main scenarios where we would wanna use one of these immutable operating systems, we'll talk about in a moment, but the big deal here is Ubuntu has announced an immutable Linux desktop base, basically taking what they've already developed for IoT devices, which is their Ubuntu Core edition, and, and making an immutable Linux desktop version from it. We're going to get into exactly what Canonical has announced here because it is the crux of what I want to talk about today, but I want to spend another moment talking about use cases for an immutable Linux and why I think Ubuntu is focused on trying to create one. Some scenarios here. Basically, immutable Linux or operating systems can be deployed in places that are focused on security, reliability, or a place that wants to resist tampering so there's no unauthorized changes, or simply to prevent malware infections of the operating system itself. You can imagine that they're very necessary for environments like one, servers, two, IoT production environments, virtual machines, or really anything containerized. Now that we understand the environments, let's talk about why Ubuntu may want to build an immutable Linux version for itself. So Canonical began the development of Ubuntu Core in 2014 to create a fully containerized platform for IoT. In Ubuntu Core, we use the same kernel container technology that Docker and LXC were built on to put every component of the system into a secure sandbox. With a well-defined upgrade and rollback, we did this to enable autonomous connected internet devices to receive updates which could apply without human intervention. To address the security and business needs at the edge, Ubuntu's core's minimal footprint lends itself to enabling a secure, resilient, evergreen operating system that can be relied upon in the most challenging environments. So you might be reading this and saying, well, don't they already have a solution? Well, they do for IoT devices. But the big deal here is actually desktop software, which is in many ways here trickier to containerize than server or IoT software because we want our desktop apps to work well together. That tight integration also makes it more difficult to define sandbox boundaries between applications and system components in a way which is both secure and easy to use snaps are a little famous for having some rough edges on the desktop this is great that they recognize this themselves we all know snaps can be slow and have some flaws starting up but they are containerized versions of applications nevertheless we are excited to explore the idea of what a fully containerized desktop where each component is immutable and isolated we have steadily been improving the experience of the desktop snaps and in due course when we think the entire system can be delivered this way, we will be excited to offer a version of Ubuntu desktop with these new capabilities. So something exciting, a whole new version here that's going to be immutable for our desktop. And why would Ubuntu want to do this? Well, we can talk about these things, but from my viewpoint, and I'm sure they talk about this, security is one of those reasons. If you can make a more secure operating system that prevents people from modifications that you don't want, then this here is a plus. The next idea is more stability because if you keep the operating system untouched this prevents software errors and instability simply because a user has a harder time making direct changes to the operating system another idea is consistency meaning if all the configuration becomes the same across all desktop environments then it becomes easy for a production environment to be deployed and made and managed including the testing and development on that machine to be easier because there is a standardized environment another thing is rapid recovery no more are the days where you can truly mess up your operating system. You should be easily able to recover since you are in a read-only state. That prevents you from making considerable changes to the operating system. So now let's see what Ubuntu has to say about this. Basically, before we can discuss the differentiations of Ubuntu Core from another immutable operating system, they have to talk about what immutable means. So we already talked about some of these read-only. We didn't talk about atomic updates, but there are predictability in isolated applications. And what are the benefits here? Well, we'll talk about that. But we want to hit on one of those keys called atomic updates because this is where a lot of operating systems run into issues. I'm sure many of you have ran into issues with this. This means 
when you're making updates to your system, so let's say you have Linux here, basically you grab a package, you come back, you compile that package locally if necessary, or install it, whatever you have to do, build or install. And then you hope that that package successfully compiles, builds or installs, but you have to do that with numerous packages. So we have packages to the end number. And each one of these will individually have to go through this process. Well, an immutable Linux has atomic updates, which just means instead of performing each individual package, it waits until all packages have been downloaded, built, compiled, or ready with install to actually apply all the changes at once. This just prevents the fact that you won't have a package breaking somewhere mid-update. It's all or nothing. All the updates are made at once. And if things are good, great. If not, you can easily recover by pulling back the one update. Really a different philosophy in making updates and immutable Linux makes that possible. So what are the benefits? We already touched on all of these, I think. Security, stability, reproducibility, and manageability. Now you can't just have all good things. What are the drawbacks? At least according to Ubuntu, reduced flexibility, limited compatibility, storage requirements, and a developer experience. So reduced flexibility and immutable OS is less flexible than a traditional OS. You users cannot modify system files or customize their system to the same degree. For the tinkerers out there who like to mess with the operating system, it becomes harder to do this from a software level. So for devs, it may become harder to manage your applications. So limited capability, not all applications and services are compatible with the containerized or isolated environments provided by the immutable OS. Some of us just won't be able to use the operating system at all because our software that we develop is not compatible with the operating system itself. Storage requirements update mechanisms often require image snapshot storage. Isolated applications can lead to redundancy and storage application dependencies. Well, this just means it makes things more verbose meaning we have snapshots on top of snapshots, making sure that we cannot fail while we're running updates and that our storage remains intact, meaning we use more space to perform the same types of updates. Developer experience, while containerized development environments provide benefits such as an improved isolation and reproducibility, they may introduce additional complexity and limit the use of familiar tools and workflows. So this changes the way we use things, which can be good or bad. So now probably the most exciting part for me is the architecture of immutable Linux operating systems. So yes, there are plenty of operating systems that are already immutable. One famous one is the Chrome OS, where updates are handled in an AB process where a device stores two different versions of the operating system and one is effectively running and the second is inactive, but to which modifications and updates can be applied in the background. If those modifications are successfully applied, then the new version is automatically selected on the next reboot. If not, the device rolls back to the existing image and does not update. So that's kind of what this looks like here. You're running the current operating system. You're updating it after the reboot process. You are ready for the update, meaning you applied if it was successfully updated, and then you're running the new operating system. There are other architectures here. Fedora Silver Blue and OS Tree have their own method of doing this. We can see that they keep a copy of the previous operating system image in this one existing along the new variant OS image. Moving on, we have micro OS and BTRFS snapshots. We can see that there's just plenty of snapshots existing here and that when a new snapshot is made, it is pushed to the top very much like a queue. So we can imagine new updates come in, a new snapshot is made. Once you reboot, the new snapshot is the one that gets used if everything is successful. Finally, I wanna talk about the last thing here. So how is Ubuntu Core combining immutability with composability? This is interesting because it really does show you how a traditional immutable operating system compares to the Ubuntu core system. The technology behind snaps extend beyond the distribution of desktop applications, however. With Ubuntu core, this philosophy of security and stability applies equally to the components that make up the entire operating system. Rather than treating the operating system as a single immutable blob, Ubuntu Core breaks it up into discrete components. The base of Ubuntu core, for example, is built on four primary snaps, gadget, kernel, base, and snap D. Additionally, operating system snaps can be layered onto this image and enabled in other elements of the operating system, such as the desktop environment. More on this in the next section. So here's what they were talking about. Traditionally, the operating system itself is containerized away from applications that are containerized. But in Ubuntu Core, they actually have applications, their snap, D daemon, additional bases, the boot base, the gadget, the kernel. 
And the claim with this approach is that it makes things even more atomic. The composable approach is to building the operating system brings a number of key benefits. In the first instance, users can assemble a streamlined Ubuntu core image with only the necessary components needed to run a single purpose application, minimizing both operating system footprint and the potential for an attack surface. The other benefit is the snap type can be updated on its own cadence, significantly reducing the need to reboot the device. Rollouts and rollbacks are more granular allowing updates and networking stack, for example, to run different cadence to the kernel. So in my opinion here, Ubuntu has a few reasons to do this. A lot of production environments are requiring this style of operating system nowadays where they are immutable to protect us from different attack vectors. So that's one important thing. They're just trying to keep up with the need of production environments. By production environments, I mean servers, containerized software that is in production, or just general IoT devices that are used by companies and organizations. So clearly Ubuntu and Canonical, their parent company, see a need for this new flavor or version of Linux because they are competing in a space where there are other offerings such as Chrome OS, Carbon OS, Fedora versions, Nix OS, the Micro OS, and other various different operating systems that already have an immutable version. So more than anything, this is playing catch up and trying to get to a place where they can offer more to their most valued customers, which are the ones who create production environments that earn them a lot of money in paid support and maintenance. In my opinion, of course, it makes sense for them to be focusing on this and bringing immutable types of flavors into their offerings. Let me know what you think about this. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.